Hey everyone, it's still trying live. So welcome back to my map making tutorial. Today we're going to continue the train module. Uh, we're on page three of five currently, and so we're going to place some units now. So now that we've got our base up and running, we should place some marines to guard and liven the place up a bit. Okay, so let's get get started. Just open up the the, the map that we stopped off on last time. So this is what we have currently. So basically navigate to the units layer, which is the, the Zergling. And you can also just press U to get to this layer. And so unit types filtering and searching. So like with doodads, there are several filter options when finding units to place in the search function as well, which you can see here. Uh, so placing the units in general follows the same rules as placing doodads. You can place, rotate, swap variations, and ignore placement. So one main difference between placing units and doodads is a player number. So whenever you place units, you must choose what player owns those units you're placing, and you can change those units, uh, the player number, from this drop-down arrow right here. Okay. So you can see in the picture below we place the marines guarding the barricades facing the road, some missile turrets, a barracks, and a command biodome for player zero, which is the neutral player. Uh, we also place a couple of marine units and a Jim Reno co commando unit down for player one. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and do that. So let's just type um, marine, make sure that we're on player zero neutral. And then let's go ahead and just place a couple, couple of marines next to the sandbags. Okay. Let's go ahead and put some turrets. A uh, missile turret here and here. Again, I'm not making exactly like the uh, tutorial website, but this is just, again, this is just a learning experience. So let's add one auto, auto turret here, another one here. Again, if you get this red icon and you want to place it there, just hold down the shift key and it'll let you place it. Okay, uh, and also selection mode, just remember the space bar and then you can select the unit uh, control to rotate it so it's actually facing the road. So it's paying attention, it's doing its duty. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see what else it wants us to add. A couple more mi missile turrets spread up, spread around. Uh, let's add one here. Got another one here. Discarding the the outside of the base. Okay. Again, selection mode. Can have it face the way we want. Although I, I do believe missile turrets rotate on their own in game. Oh no, actually, I don't think they do in StarCraft 2, uh, only when an enemy unit comes into its area. But okay, that looks fine. So now it's wanting us to add uh, the com command biodome, and we also need that. Uh, big transport ship that's on the helipad so currently we don't have one but first let's let's go ahead and add a, a path to these these units so they're not stranded out there so let's go back to the terrain option the textures and then just the dirt road we kind of just add it out here just fine so now we have paths to both uh, both of the barricades okay so let's go back to the units tab and search for Jim Rayner. Uh, it's currently not there, so I think what we have to do, let's go to file. I think it's a de dependency that's not loaded. So let's go to file dependencies. So right now we just have the Liberty mod. Uh, so let's go ahead and add, I think we need the Liberty campaign as well as the Liberty story uh, assets. So let's go ahead and load those assets. Press OK. 
give it a second. These messages that just come up, pop up, uh, they're just warnings. So just close those. And let's go. Oh, so so now you see it it pops up. So we needed to load the the campaign mod to get those units. Uh, so we want player one. So let's add the Jim Rayner commando. Let's add him right here on the, the ramp. And then we want two Marines with him. Uh, just basic Marines. So these will show up red initially. Okay, selection mode. Let's have him face the bottom of the ramp. Done. Okay, so now let's add the ship. I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but search functions, a great feature. Um, so I think this colony ship landed. Yep, that's definitely it. Um, so I think that, yeah, we actually want that to be neutral. So let's make that ship player uh, zero. Again, you can rotate if you like. And then let's add the biodome as well. Colonist, uh, command biodome, as well as for uh, player zero. So let's just add that about right there. So that's fine. Let's check the website. Uh, oh, we need a barracks as well. So again, for player zero, So let's just add the barracks there. Uh, we can go ahead and add another barracks here. Just kind of make it even. And I think that that looks pretty good. Um, see if there's anything else we need to add for this first first page. I think that's it. Uh, another. You might not. You might notice that there's no sound uh, effects when I'm placing units or undoing things uh, I that's a preference that you can change just go file preferences and then sounds and then master volume just put that as zero uh, otherwise every time you undo something or place a unit it'll make a, a sound effect it'll have a sound effect so this, that's just personal preference so now it's just saying unit properties uh, just again for like doodads you can double click on a unit uh, you can change their position, rotation, uh, give them a name if you like, uh, those types of things. Okay, so let's continue on to the next page. So this is page four or five. So player properties, uh, you can modify each player's color, decals, race, and more in the player properties window. We're gonna make players one units blue and make player one always be Terran. So open the player properties window by opening the map menu and then clicking on player properties. So go to map, player properties. Okay, select player one from the list and then change the color option from any to blue, then change the race to Terran. So player one, color, blue, race, Terran. Okay, so that should change the, at least the Marines to blue, okay. Next page. So this is going to be a shorter video, um, but that's okay. So now onto the last page, map properties. Okay, to open up the map properties, map properties window, go to map and then select map info. Okay. So basic info. The first tab lets you set options about the map that you want to show players that are looking for your map on Battle.net. Uh, you can change the names, suggest a number of players, description, things like that. The options tab. So the right, you can change the unexplored areas or fog of war. So this controls whether the areas of the map that you haven't seen are dimmed or blacked out because this is going to be an adventure map, we're going to change uh, from gray mask to the black mask. Just make sure you press OK when you're done with this. 
Uh, so before pressing OK, let's check out the bounds tab. So this controls how big or small the map is. If you find that your map has a lot of unused space, or it needs more space, you can modify it here. So I guess this currently is our map boundary, what's in the yellow dash line. So the camera bounds and the map bounds control how far you can scroll the camera and move your units and how far the map how far the map terrain itself extends respectively. Right now our map is a good size, so we'll leave this alone. So if you do want to change, you can just click these left and right areas to change the, the camera. Uh, so it just gives you an idea. Okay, you can also, if you click this, modify the map bounds as well. Okay. Uh, just make sure you press OK to save that the black mask change that we did in the options tab. Okay, but first let's go to textures. So is, this is just saying that this this allows you to change which house that you're using, unless you swap out textures. Uh, but for now, we're just going to keep it as is. And then finally, the loading screen. It can this tab can trans contains controls for editing the image that displays while the map is loading. The melee setting will automatically generate a load screen with the map name and, and an image corresponding to the planet tile set used on the map. For our purposes, this is fine, so we're going to leave it alone. So of course you can change this. You can create a uh, your own loading screen image if you like. Okay, so just press OK to save that uh, the changes you made. And that should be it. Uh, so let's go ahead and save. So we, we placed our units uh, for player one, Jim Rayner and his two sidekicks. And we got some neutral units here guarding uh, the road. They have their missile turrets, barracks, uh, command biodome. So now you're all ready to test your map out. Again, make sure you save your map first, and then all you have to do to test it out is press this uh, test document. Uh, so you can go ahead and do that. I'm not going to do that. Basically, it'll let you control these three units, and you can just roam around uh, the map and whatnot. So, but we don't have any triggers or anything else set, so you're not going to be able to capture these units. Uh, it it should automatically show like a victory screen or, or whatnot, and then just press continue or uh, return to game and it'll let you just explore the map. So I think next we're, we're gonna cover triggers. So uh, yeah, so until then, just thanks everyone for watching and take it easy and I'll see you next time. Bye then.